Hi, this is healing part six. <clears throat> we just felt led of the Lord to um, just keep on um, in our midweekly series to just keep um, focusing on healing and health from the Word of God, the Bible. And uh, today's theme is the words of our mouth, what we speak. Now, you may have heard teaching on this before. This is not new, but I really urge you to just listen to these verses and to what I have to say and, and let it sink in and let it um, let it do whatever work it needs to do. Um, Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And, you know, as you talk, you know, you, you're putting words into the environment around you. Uh, so that environment and that atmosphere creates an atmosphere around you. As you talk, uh, you're having an effect on your mind and on your body. Uh, so your words are very important. What you speak is very important. Now, the average person... Uh, in the world, most of them wouldn't think about this. They speak whatever they want, whenever they want. And, uh, of course, that's not um, good for our health. So, you know, we need to actually give really good consideration to what we're talking about. Um, and you can speak words of life and you can speak words of um, death over yourself, even over other people. Um, and even over situations and so on. And so, so, you know, the atmosphere around you and the effect you're having on yourself and on others, you know, is very much dictated by what's coming out your mouth. That, that's, you know, our words are very creative. Some people describe it as our words being containers of power. That's another way to put it. Um, and that power can be, you know, negative or positive in its effects. Um, the next scripture we want to look at is... Um, is Mark 11, which is the great uh, faith, um, or at least part of it, is the great faith <coughs> teaching from Jesus. And in that teaching, in verse 11, uh, 23, he says this. Now, you really need to read this in the Old King James or the New King James. I'm in the New King James here to really get the full effect of this. The modern versions kind of um, don't put it across the same way. Um, so this is a new King James, Mark eleven twenty three. For assuredly I say to you, this is Jesus teaching about faith. Assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, but does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Now, some people have pointed out that in that verse, that it talks about, um, believing um, once and saying three times, believing in his heart once, which is part of the operation of faith. Faith operates in our heart and our mouth. We'll see that in a minute in Romans 10. Um, and so there's, there's believing in our heart, but there's also what we're speaking. And so what we say here, he mentions three times. Very important. Uh, and it says, it culminates in Jesus saying, he will have whatever he says. Uh, and this is just so true in life that we end up having what we say, what we talk about, uh, what we talk about, you know, really becomes, you know, who we are and what we have in life. So you need to think about what you're talking about. James called the tongue, you know, what we talk about, the rudder of our life. The, the tongue's this little part of our body that actually steers the direction of our life. So we just mentioned Romans 10. So we'll go to there. And uh, Romans 10 um, verses 8 to 10. But what does it say? The word is near you. In your mouth and in your heart. See, these are two places that faith operates. In your mouth and in your heart. You could substitute the word spirit for your heart. It's your inner being. That is the word of faith which we preach. Well, hopefully that's what we preach. 
<coughs> is a word, a message that produces faith. That if you confess with your mouth, the Lord, actually, let's just stop there for a minute about what we preach, you know, in our churches and our groups and so on. And I'm going to say this as the voice in the wilderness that, that I am, but I think it's still worth saying, is that, you know, in the, um, the book of Revelation, Jesus um, talks about talks to a church there, the Sardis church, uh, and says that they have a reputation about being alive, but he said, actually, they're, they're dead. And, you know, I've thought about, you know, even our church group, we have the word life in our title. We're called Spirit Life, <coughs> our house church, Spirit Life Church. And I thought about this. A lot of us churches have the word life, in our title, the title of our church, or some churches are called something a live church, some churches are called something live church, or whatever this. We have these words in our titles. Many churches do, and many of our promotional material we'll talk about uh, life as well. And Jesus talked to this church in Sardis and said, "Well, yeah, you've got this sort of you put across this uh, idea of life." But what's happening is you're, you're, you're actually producing um, death. Now, what I want to put to you is this, that I think as churches, and, you know, I can't do it for any other church group except our own. I'm not anyone else's judge. So I have to self-examine our church, our church group. But I think as churches, what I want to suggest is this, is that it's really important to examine what we're preaching. Are we preaching a word of faith, a word that brings faith? Are we preaching a word of life? Are we preaching the actual word? Are we preaching the word of God? Because we've seen already in this series of teaching on healing that the word of God produces life and health. Proverbs um, 4, and Jesus said, my words are spirit and they're life. So the word of God produces life and health health so i think one of the things we need to examine as churches is what we if what we're preaching is really the word and then the word is the is the is the um substance that will produce the substance of faith in people and produce um life so i just we just stop there just to mention that verse 9 that if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus or that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So he's talking about, again, confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart. And this is how we initially get saved, but it's also talking about ongoing salvation. For Because, you know, we know that the Bible talks about being saved, past tense, about uh, being, uh, or having been saved, past tense, about being saved in an ongoing sense, and also a future being saved, you know, the redemption of our bodies and so on giving a resurrected body and all those things. So verse 10, with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So this is talking about our initial salvation, but it's also talking about ongoing salvation. Now that word salvation in the Greek, saved is sozo, salvation is soteria. And it doesn't just mean saved. It also means healed. It means preserved. It means rescued. It means delivered. But part of the meaning is healed. I've even got one um, old translation here that my dad gave me, my precious old dad, who's with the Lord now in heaven. Uh, he gave me this translation of the Bible where everywhere in, our, in most of our Bibles where it's translated saved, it says healed instead. And that's quite legitimate for a Bible translation to say that. Um, so you could just as easily say with the mouth, confession is made unto healing and health. So we believe the word of God in our heart and we also speak with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation, which includes healing and health health so the words of your mouth are really important so you know on the negative side we really want to stop ourselves getting into a sort of a stream of unbelief getting locked into talking words of unbelief and you know uh when 
there's you know symptoms when there's a condition present you know we're talking about sickness disease these sorts of things uh you know you notice that it's a temptation for people to get into to locked into talking about their condition well even identifying it as their condition is probably not the best policy you know people say my you know um arthritis my heart condition, all heart condition all this kind of stuff you know really then you're taking ownership of that thing and you don't want ownership of it so there's an example of how your words are important now of course we talk about some we have to describe symptoms sometimes things like that that's we're not talking about denial here we're not de in denial of what's going on in, in our body or someone else's body that's not what we're talking about here that that's 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 not this is not that thing um but what we're talking about is what you focus on largely um in your speaking um and in the words of your mouth i've just got the courier driver here i'm going to stop for one second pause for a second so we're talking about this uh speaking unbelief and negativity you know this happened with the um uh, 10 out of the 12 spies in Numbers 13 that went into Canaan to spy out the land. Joshua and Caleb spoke words of faith, but the other 10, 10 out of 12, and it probably happens the same kind of ratio today, that 10 out of 12 people will be speaking unbelief. So don't expect everyone to be going around and speaking faith. But you need to be one of the two out of the 12 that speaks faith like Joshua and Caleb. And they went in to the promised land so whatever your promised land is, uh, part of getting in there is speaking faith and not unbelief. So the other 10 were just babbling unbelief. They were just babbling about, you know, we can't do this and we're weak and, you know, <clears throat> all this kind of stuff. And this also, uh, in another part of Numbers, um, this happens, you know, they they complain and they say, oh, if only we die, you know, in this in this wilderness. And God listens to them and says, you'll have exactly what you say. You will die in this wilderness. <laughs> and he tells them that. So, you know, what you speak is important. Think about what you're speaking. Now, when I'm like I just said, we're not in denial of symptoms when we're talking about healing. But what we're saying is let's talk about what the Word of God says. Let's talk about the promises of healing. Uh, let's not keep meditating keep talking about sickness don't just don't make that your main um, topic of conversation and don't make it your main thing that you're doing and don't take it on as an identification you know of you and who you are and all that kind of thing you know who you are is you know jesus said that the covenant he's made with us in the new covenant is part of that covenant is by his stripes we are are healed through the cross he has provided healing um, for us so see yourself that way look to the cross you know and 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 um look to jesus who has who bore our sicknesses and carried our pains don't get um like i say you know carried away in the stream of um negativity and unbelief watch the words of your mouth you know you need to catch yourself so i think sometimes when other people are doing it around us um who are close to us we need to say to them if they're caught in a stream of unbelief we need to start saying to people hey stop stop this is not good for you you know you're, you're caught you've caught yourself in a, in a in a kind of a stream of negativity unbelief you need to stop and just stop them or stop ourselves if we need to or we need someone close to us you know the bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend you know that when a friend rebukes you it's their love <laughs> to you and i think we need to learn to do this more to speak the truth in love uh, to people so the words of your mouth in relation to healing that's today's subject god bless amen